Hi, Achim Schloss from the Inner Space Explorers. All right, first of all, sorry, I know I'm terribly late on my videos, and um, so right now I'm on Elba trying to find a, a follow up project um, after the Ghost Rig expedition and finally get some time to, to work on this again. So, one of the one of my viewers, followers, whatever, um, requested a video on what DIR is to me and how I got involved in all of this. So I thought about it for a while and decided to make a video about it. <laughs> what is DIR to me is a good question. Um, for me, it basically means the cleanest safest and therefore most simplified approach to diving and um, that is directly connected to to the way how I got involved because I mean I'm, I'm a self-trained diver initially I started diving when I was seven you get some initial training from a former Navy diver so training was more like breathe in breathe out <laughs> and, and don't hold your breath, uh, but that's it basically. And so formal training, I think the first formal training I ever received, I was 16 or 17 years old and I had almost a thousand dives. And um, when I went to the States, which was around that time, I was 17, 18, um, I thought I'm a pretty good diver because I mean, I survived all these dives, uh, I went deep, I did all the kind of crazy shit, what do you do when you're a teenager? So. I thought I have big balls. And then I was lucky enough to meet Jake Exley in Florida and uh, <laughs> he, he showed me um, in, a, in a pretty straight way that uh, I don't know shit. My skills are bad, I have no knowledge. I, I, he just, I mean, he made me start again. So the first couple of dives I did with Shaq, um where I initially booked some, some cabin training uh, showed me that there is a complete different world and um, and opened my eyes so to speak and then uh, a couple of years later when when the whole DIR thing started and, and finally got a name I mean everybody knows my my background I got involved with uh, with GUE in its uh, founding days and obviously that again opened the whole new world and um, Today was almost ten times the amount of dives than I had when I when I started with this. Um, I can say that a lot of the dives that seemed to be impossible in these old days are kind of standard today, and um, so that proves that the concept is right. And um, when I when I think back in the early days of technical diving in the 80s, when you look at all this equipment loading and the spec up for the backup and um, so this this strict thinking on no matter what happens if I have enough equipment with me it will it will solve the problem um, and how difficult that was and how how breathtaking sometimes to handle all of that stuff and when you look at it today a, a clean streamlined um, configuration with only the stuff that you really need how easy and, and fluent things become then the the difference becomes very clear I think for a, a lot of, of new divers from today it is hard to understand that because they don't they don't walk this way they don't have that progression so they just start in a, I mean when somebody's doing like an ISE recreational course I mean he starts perfectly so to speak I mean no poodle jacket, no weird host configurations, no weight belts and all of this. So probably it's sometimes hard to understand how these things evolved, but um, those of you who are a little bit older and, and started diving in, in back in the day um, and made that progression, they will, it is much easier to understand that. And another, another point is and that was funny enough recently pointed out by another follower on, on YouTube who said it is uh, fantastic the amount of detail that we put in that in these videos and that's another another point and at the same time it's something my students always 
appreciated in my training, in my teaching, it's the little tricks, it's the details that in the end make your diving so much easier, like how do you grab that bolt snap? How do you feel for that D-ring? And how do you then attach the bolt? And just for example, how do you tie that knot? And how do you attach things? And, and so all these, these minor details that in the end make it more fluent, more easy, that's a lot of, of DIR for me. Um, because as unnecessary as it may may seem when when you look at it when when you do all these small things when you fix all these small things actually the the, the sum of it makes a really nice slick streamlined system and system doesn't only mean equipment also means handling of the equipment um, positioning of the equipment and the way you can handle your equipment and all of this makes for a for a relaxed and fluent dive. I mean, when you swim along and you're watching fish, you're working with a camera and you want to check your SPG, for example, and you start like, oh, where is it? Oh, is it here or there? And then how do I deattach it? How do I look at it? And it just takes your, um, takes your attention from the initial goal, like making a picture or, or making a movie clip or whatever, to this thing. So you have an interruption in your dive, in, 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 the, in the flow of your dive. And then, ah, oh, okay, I have 100 bars, and then where do I attach it again, and how do I clip it? And, and so this distraction is something that can be really annoying, especially if you go deeper into technical diving, you know, like complex navigation in caves and stuff like that, or deep stuff, where you probably have very limited bottom time. So how much time of this precious time do you want to spend fumbling around with your equipment or checking your depth or whatever, or your, your, the amount of gas you have? So, um, when all this is fixed and you're just swimming along and you can still focus on your camera or whatever and you just unclip, you realize, you clip it back, it's like, like shifting in your car. You don't think like, mm, where's the shift stick? Uh, okay, first it's there, how do I do? I mean, that would be ridiculous. I mean, it would, it would make driving almost impossible. Also, when you push, sometimes people probably... Oh, I guess. Um, but that's the same thing. You just it just, just should become second nature. You should not need to focus on your equipment. Um, the, the equipment and, and the person, I mean, the diver in its entirety, it should be a unit. And um, that basically describes DR for me. Uh, just being more fish than, than person and not having to to interrupt the flow of my dive constantly, to fumble around with things, and um, I mean, of course, you can extend that to, to tons of other things like decompression and knowledge, and I mean, have the things in your mind and not, not in the book, and, and know your stuff and know what happens in your body, all of these things. Um, so I can continue that for half an hour, but I think I managed to, to give you a basic idea of. Um, of what I think about this, and I hope it answers the question. Please um, keep sending us requests for videos, and if you have questions, just ask them, and I'm always happy to answer them, and it also helps us to um, keep this um, channel growing. All right, thank you very much. If you like this, give us a thumbs up, check us out on Facebook, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.